The superficial radial nerve is the terminal sensory branch of the radial nerve, and it innervates the dorsum of the hand, blocking it selectively rather than the main trunk of the radial nerve more proximally in the upper arm is useful for minor hand surgery or if motor sparing hand surgery with intraoperative testing is desired. The superficial radial nerve runs under the brachioradialis muscle together with the radial artery. The nerve is lateral to the radial artery in the distal half of the forearm. It emerges into the subcutaneous tissues at the anatomical snuff box close to the cephalic vein at the wrist. With the forearm in the supinated or midpronated position, the probe is placed over the lateral surface of the forearm. At the elbow joint, the radial nerve is an elongated structure under the brachioradialis muscle. As the probe is slid distally, the radial nerve continues under the muscle and splits into superficial and deep branches. The deep branch traveling off in a posterior lateral direction As we slide the probe distally towards the wrist, the brachioradialis muscle shrinks into its tendon and the superficial radial nerve continues to lie under the muscle but becomes more and more superficial, running just lateral to the radial artery until it lies just under the same investing fascia. Note that the lateral antecubital cutaneous nerve, the terminal cutaneous branch of the musculocutaneous nerve, also descends the forearm but on top of brachioradialis and it comes to lie in the same area of the wrist. And it can be seen here in the subcutaneous tissues just above the superficial radial nerve. In another example here, we start scanning over the radial artery at the wrist and we trace it up proximally, watching for brachioradialis muscle to expand into its belly. As we do this, we can see the hyperechoic superficial radial nerve sliding medially under brachioradialis towards the radial artery. This back and forth scanning can be repeated as needed to clearly identify the nerve. Beyond the anatomical snuff box, the superficial radial nerve pierces the investing fascia to become subcutaneous while the lateral antibrachiocutaneous nerve dissipates into its terminal branches. Both of these nerves can be blocked in the same pass using a 25 gauge hypodermic needle. Place the probe in the transverse orientation halfway along the patient's supinated forearm. The median nerve is usually visible here. Slide the probe in a lateral direction from the median nerve to find the radial artery and brachioradialis and look for the superficial radial nerve lateral to the artery. Slide the probe distally towards the wrist and the nerve usually reveals itself as a sliding structure that rises up from under brachioradialis towards the artery. Inject carefully in the plane of the artery and nerve. Withdraw and inject at a more superficial level to target the LACN. In this second example, we start by looking for the radial artery in the distal third of the forearm under brachioradialis. Tracing distally usually reveals the superficial radial nerve and LACN sliding along the deep and superficial surfaces of the muscle respectively. The radial artery and superficial radial nerve are deep to the brachioradialis muscle, while the LACN lies superficial to the investing fascia of the muscle and both can be identified by tracing proximally and distally along the muscle. Insert the needle into the fascial plane under brachioradialis and open it up with a jet of local anesthetic to surround the superficial radial nerve.
withdraw the needle and perform a similar injection in the more superficial subcutaneous layer above brachioradialis muscle and its tendon to block the LACN and thus ensure anesthesia of the area around the base of the thumb. If you have trouble finding the nerves, a simple alternative is subcutaneous infiltration over the lateral wrist just proximal to the anatomical snuff box. Extending the injection more medially over the posterior aspect of the wrist will also block the terminal branches of the posterior and medial antibrachial cutaneous nerves. Performing the injection under ultrasound guidance helps ensure injection in the correct subcutaneous plane above the investing fascia of the wrist and under the dermis of the skin. Ensure that you follow the curvature of the wrist with appropriate needle manipulation. Open up a safe plane of fluid with local anesthetic injection before advancing the needle. The nerves often become visible as local anesthetic spreads around them. 